Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Town Square Media and 1061 Kiss FM proudly bring to you your podcast champions of the world. He's the R to the O to the B. I'm STEV. We are your host with the most, bringing you everything wrestling related from post to post. That's right, broadcasting again live from uh, my home because I am still recovering from back surgery. However, I'm kind of sitting up a little better. Yeah. I feel like so. I'm trying to get better as soon as I can. We can get back into our normal studios. We've got news we still want to cover uh, from the previous weeks in wrestling. We covered Daniel Bryan earlier in the week. This time, Steve, I feel like the, the next biggest thing we need to talk about, uh, here comes the money. Yes. The return of Shane O. Mack. Let's talk about this. Yeah, so, it looks like the Rob. Shane O. Mack is back. Shane O'Mac <laughs> is back. Uh, I know you were very excited about this. Yes. Um, you are a big Shane O'Mac fan, correct? Um, I, I appreciate what he does. Um, definitely in front of the camera, if not behind the camera. Um, what surprised me about this is I heard no rumors about this. I don't believe that, there were any leaks. That's one thing I loved about yes. this. And this happens so rarely yes. in today's day and age with the internet and websites. No one had any idea. And my understanding is even... The wrestlers didn't know. I read a report, don't know if this is true or not, but um, that even on the call sheet in the back, it just said, like, big surprise to open the show. Like, the guy, people didn't know what was going to happen. It it didn't leak, and I love that. Yes. And I will also say, while I know people are excited to see him, I was genuinely surprised about how loud his reaction was when he returned to, I think, Detroit is where it was. That is what happens when you internet people don't ruin surprises. Well, that's kind of their job. You know, I don't mind when news sites ruin surprises. And if I go searching for wrestling news and I find it, whose fault is that? I agree. So, um, let's talk about this. Uh, Because I've got got thoughts that kind of run from positive and negative. So, there was this segment involving the Vincent J. McMahon Legacy Award. Yes. That was being awarded to Stephanie. Mm Mm-hmm. And then Shane McMahon kind of comes out, interrupts things, and steals the show. Yes. By the way, Vince also drops an F-bomb throughout. He does, yes. Yeah, I've I've seen that back, and and I love that. So, um, this leads to WrestleMania implications. For some reason, and here's my one problem with this. First of all, I want to say I'm very excited Shane's back. I don't know if it's short-term or long-term. I hope it's long-term. But I'm happy he's back. If you really go through, while he's not a pro wrestler, so to speak, there are not very many less than great Shane McMahon matches. Oh, yeah. And Shane puts his body on the line and wants to entertain people and works really hard. So I'm glad he's going to be there, and I'm okay with the capacity that he's in there. However, this is one of those examples of what I kind of consider crowbar booking or nonsense booking. Um, This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I was listening to Bret Hart's podcast. uh, The first episode aired earlier this week. Uh, Brett had a lot of great things to say about Shane, and this was actually really cool, I thought, because he's like, I have a lot of respect for Shane, because Shane wanted to be involved in every aspect of the business. Shane wanted to announce. Shane wanted to be a referee. Shane wanted to book. Shane wanted to write. Shane wanted to wrestle. He said Shane knows everything about the wrestling business. He said he would put the ring together. Like, that's cool. I love stuff like that. But what, like, what is the angle here? So, like, here's, here's where my head's at, and Brett also kind of said this, too, like, is he, like, it seemed like he was kind of on Vince's side first. Like, like he was kind of there to help Vince. Or at least got him out of some sort of mystery jam that we don't know about seven or eight years ago or whatever it is. Yeah, well, we still have yet to learn that story. Yeah, are we going to? Or is it just some mystery thing that we don't know about? And if, Vin, if, if Shane got him out of a jam, why is he upset with him for getting him out of a jam? And if he said to Shane, I'll give you the company because you got me out of this jam, why is he upset about doing it? To, to me, this Vince part doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think Your thoughts? I think the Vince part is basically Shane has something over on Vince, and Vince is upset about that. Where I like, or where they need Shane, Shane's a Band-Aid on two fronts. Well, for one, most of the WWE Universe is not happy with the WWE, or the WrestleMania main event, Triple H and Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. So they needed something else to sell WrestleMania. This does that. Okay. Also, I think they had another opponent planned for Undertaker and John Cena, 
and with the injury, he covers up that. That's true, too. Again, he does it well. So he's not just one of those tan band-aids. He's like a Snoopy band-aid that you enjoy having on. <laughs> okay. But So it works for me. Okay, so then let's talk about Undertaker's promo from Monday, where, like, why is Undertaker doing Vince's bidding here? Like, what, like, what, it, like, I don't, I don't like the way the story's coming together, or maybe there's still something that's left to be told, but there's too many question marks on this storyline right now for me to be gung-ho about it. Yes. So are you, are you there, or are you just at the point of still just really excited to see him? Um... I, I, I'm really excited to see him, but I'm kind of wavering because, for one, I want to make sure this match actually happens, and I'm not getting hyped for something where Shane's going to pull a switch. I had a buddy of mine say that maybe it's a red herring where they set the match up, but it's all just to get someone else in Shane's spot. So I'm hoping that's not the case. I don't think that's the case, to be honest with you. I think this match has too much buzz going into it. I ha there's like a 10% part of me that feels like the main event might change. Yes. Like Dean Ambrose might win at Roadblock. Um, and uh, that, that I feel is a possibility. Okay. But um, I don't feel like Undertaker and Shane's going to change. The Hell in the Cell adds a whole other element to it too because Shane likes to fly. Yes, he does. So how does this change the complexity or, or the, the makeup of the match to you? Um. I mean, it just adds another element. I mean, it's like another topping on the ice cream. I'm sorry I'm doing all the metaphors, but WrestleMania is going to be full of them for me. Um, but, I mean, just, you know, Shane O'Mac's back. He's wrestling Undertaker. He's wrestling Undertaker in Hell in a Cell. Mm -hmm. I mean, anymore, and I'm, my head's going to explode as a wrestling fan. Um, going back to the, the Undertaker thing, I was kind of surprised like you were about his stance. I thought maybe he'd be opposed to being Vince's pawn. But then I kind of brushed that off as, you know, he's a warrior. He just wants to win. Okay. So he's letting Vince know, I'm going to win, but anything that happens to your son is on you. Okay, so I have a few more thoughts about this. Okay. Um, another one being, okay, so Vince supposedly left Shane the company after Shane saves Vince's butt in mysterious ways that we don't know about yes. yet. Um, if he did this deal with Shane, why does Shane have to beat The Undertaker to, to get the company? You know, why is that? Yeah. Um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, secondly, I mean, on the surface, so let's look at Undertaker's history. What's he is he's twenty two and one now, correct? Yes. So the only person in the history of Undertaker's WrestleMania career to beat Undertaker is the huge beast Brock Lesnar. You look at Shane on the surface, it doesn't look like much of a matchup, right? Yeah, I does. mean, it looks like Undertaker should just rip rip him apart. Yes. So those are all things that are still kind of like making me frustrated. I'm still <laughs> happy he's there, and I'm happy yeah. the match is happening, but I need these things to come together for me to, for this to be a perfect moment. So also, control of WWE on the line. You know, I guess if Shane wins, he controls WWE. I don't know what happens if he loses. I suppose that authority retains control of it. Yeah. What does that mean? You, I, I would think a stipulation like this would mean that Shane would win the match. The only problem with that is we're talking about Undertaker. Yes. How do you see this one playing out? Um, I'm not mean. I guess I have to wait for the story to unfold in a couple weeks. I mean, in my mind, as how I view wrestling, I see Shane somehow pulling out a victory. Undertaker's record's not pristine at WrestleMania anymore. It's true. So it can happen. I mean, in a Hell in a Cell, a multitude of things can happen. Interference. Um, I mean, different weapon. I mean, anything can happen in a Hell of a Cell. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like it. That kind of raises Shane's chances in my mind. So, okay, uh, I agree with you there. And then there's one other thing that I'm worried about. Okay. Um, so Shane used the term control of Raw. Yes. He didn't say WWE. One thing that's scaring me, now this could be, it could be good and it could be bad. Um, I see the potential to have Shane run Raw and Stephanie run SmackDown. Okay. Um, that could be a, a breath of fresh air for some storylines. Mm -hmm. However... Uh, I still stand firm on this. Uh, I'm very opposed to brand exclusivity. Yes. I don't like, oh, are you the same way? Yes, I am. Um, I, to me, it, when they did the brand extension for the first time, back in like 2002 or whenever it was, um, they wanted to make it feel like Raw versus Nitro, like WWE versus WCW. Like if yeah. someone would jump ship, it would be a big deal. Yes. That effect never happened. No. Um, it was all WWE guy versus WWE guy. It becomes too much for me. Uh, I don't watch SmackDown. 
Um, and if the guy goes to SmackDown, it's I just don't get to see them anymore. No. So to me, I don't want that to happen, but I do want Shane to stick around, even if it's in a leadership capacity. Yes. Thoughts about that? I do want Shane to stick around. I think he's a, a new face that can add to the product. Um, I don't know how much control he'll have behind the scenes, but they definitely need to change something, and Shane is a change in the positive direction. Yeah, I think that, I don't know if he's, you know, being paid for stuff behind the scenes. I hope he is because yeah. I feel like he's a very talented hand on camera and off. So yes. uh, I guess this one needs to keep unfolding until I'm 100% settled in with it. But I'm glad we got to talk about it. Uh, of course, we'll be back on Tuesday with another edition of Post to Post. We'll talk about everything that happened on Raw. I have other things I want to talk about, too, at some point down the line. So we're gonna, we may be bringing you three episodes a week here in the, uh, the coming weeks because of how long we've been off. So uh, unless you have anything to add, Steve, I'm ready to sign off. Oh, I just want to add, don't worry, and let the story play out. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> we're going to watch. We're going to learn. We're going to enjoy as we are on this road to WrestleMania. So for myself, The Rob, and my tag team partner, Steve. It's clobbering time!